Ho, 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 and Merry Christmas. I'm your host, John Santa Ellie, and this is Inside the 209 Christmas Day Edition. We've got a great show on tap for you today. First, we're going to start off with me back on the court for Encore in the 209. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the backhand high lob serve down the line. We want that serve to be a wallpaper serve. I don't see many players doing that anymore. So, take notes. Listen up and give this serve a try. From there, we'll go to the splat drill. Now, this is one of the most important drills in the game. You're going to have so many moments on the racquetball court where your opponent tries a pinch or a splat shot. They leave it up. You've got an opportunity from the middle of the court. How are you going to execute this? Watch this segment and you'll see exactly how to work on this specific shot with the splat drill. And then from there, we're going to take it over to my main man, Jesse Cerna. Now, Jesse Cerna came to us here in Stockton about three or four years ago. He's a personal trainer over at In Shape Clubs, and we saw him training some of the members there, and then we'd see him kind of looking at the racquetball courts, and then eventually we just struck up a friendship and realized that, man, we have our speed and strength coach right here at our own club. From that point on, he's been a part of the group, and he's now a great open racquetball player, so he knows exactly what to train for when it comes to racquetball. So, Pay attention to Jesse Cerna. All of these guys in Stockton here are young Ecton pros. You'll never see them out of shape. That's one thing you won't find them guilty of is being out of shape and not prepared for a match. So, Jesse Cerna, listening up. We've got the backhand lob, the splat drill, and Jesse Cerna working out the guys. Back on court here in the 209. We're going to talk a little bit more about backhand serves again, but this time more traditional. The high lob down the line backhand serve, hopefully resulting in a wallpaper serve. There's some different ways to hit this, and I've recently come across several different ways, so I thought I'd maybe talk about it a little bit. I'm going to start off by showing you my dad, Dave Ellis, head coach of the United States national team. He's got a really goofy way of doing this that I've never decided to try, but I might as well show you all because he has some good ideas about this and some good concepts. My dad, who's played a lot of racquetball, I mean, I'm talking 38 years of racquetball, so he's developed different serves for himself also along the way. But my dad comes over here, he likes to take more of somewhere in between a backhand shooting grip, the correct backhand grip, and a forehand grip. He's a closer left forehand side. He likes to take that forehand side here and really get it leveled up. You'll see him actually touch the wall and kind of level that stream bit, turn his body slightly towards the back so that he's really straight, and then he'll get that top out front of him and just try to keep a straight line right down the wall. I don't even know if I can do this and Nick will show you. We have a target back here in the corner here. We always have target practice. We got our chair back there. In the chair. Good enough. If it comes too far off the back wall, Nick's the chair. Well, hopefully the angle is good enough. So this is Dave Ellis style. Not John Ellis style, but it's still work pretty good. I'm using 
using my legs. Rewind it for a second. Watch how much those legs are involved in the serve. It's not all arm, stiff, no legs. The control comes with the legs and the core. Now, come again. Here we go. My style. You'll notice a, a you know, kind of a, a factor with me always. I don't want to put spin on the ball whenever possible. I enjoy putting spin on the ball. So I'll hold it somewhere closer to my backhand grip. Now here's my backhand grip. That V is on the back part where that O and that L on the echelon racket, which you all should have, you know, right about there. But for, for my backhand lob serve, I'll change it just a little bit more over to the side of the racket rather than flatter on the racket. So I'm going to change it a little bit. That's going to allow me to really open up that stream bed a little bit more. I want to get some spin on the ball so it tails down the line, which means I better get my contact strike point on the ball just a little bit more over to the right, hoping that that tail back is in. Now, I won't lie, but the way I hit the down the line lob serves, I kick balls off of the side wall a little bit more than I want to, a little bit more than maybe my see, you know, my dad's style or other player's style, but I also am rewarded with more wallpaper serves because I'm able to get that ball to hug that side wall with a little bit of spin, it kisses and stays on that side wall. So let's see if I can execute one here. Legs into it. I don't know if you guys can see that one, that wasn't very good. Let's try that again. Not good enough. I might even have Nick edit that one out of this uh, section right here. Let's try it again. Now, unfortunately, there was the kick. A little kiss off the side wall, literally, right about here, and it kicked over to the middle a little bit. I got one more chance at this. Ooh. Different action all together there. So you're seeing three different ways to hit this serve, and if you're noticing, I might be not choosing the right way to hit this serve, but it kind of flows with all the deception that I have with a whole bunch of other backhand serves. So I'm gonna stick to it, and I'm probably gonna stay in here for about another 20 minutes and practice this again so that I can actually hit this the next time I do an instructional on a high lob backhand. That's all I gotta say about this. Good luck trying it at home. Nick, stay on me for a second. Let's just see if I can hit one of these. Oh my goodness, I need some work. There it is. Oh. Okay, now we can go. It's John Ellis on court the 209. We'll be back for more very soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed that information on the backhand high lob. Don't be shy. Give it a try. Especially when you're playing players at the club that you know you normally are going to beat. Try a new serve. Work on that backhand high lob. I guarantee this. Sudzy Monchik worked on it a ton because he always used to serve that thing to me. So now we're moving on to the splat drill. This is a great drill, as I mentioned before. If you're naughty, the splat might work out well for you. If you're nice, go down the line. So which one are you, naughty or nice? We're back on court here in the 209. We're going to talk a little bit about the left up splat drill down the line. And what I mean by that is quite often from either side, your opponent might take a splat shot from the backcourt, leave that ball up. For example, let's pretend I got somebody in the backcourt here. They're hitting a splat. Now, I'm covering the down the line and cross court still, but they go splat this time. What I see happen so often is that person will read the splat. They see it's going to stay up. Maybe they need to attack it closer to the service line right here because it's not going to come off the side wall very much. Or maybe it's high and hard. It's going to come off that side wall a little. And what I see is the players start to come and drag the ball in their eyes and they just get here and they make the stance wide open. Forcing the shot to go across court back to where they're going to the ball from. Probably still closer to that spot than covering this down the line. Or they have to manipulate their shoulder or the wrist or forearm to poke the ball down the line really having no body on it, just giving it a little poke like this. And what we have to talk about is getting here, seeing it hurt with your eyes, and then turning that butt, get a turn, what we call the banana move again, and making sure you can establish that line with your body and your legs so you can put some pace on that ball if you need to. Remember, the pro level, these guys are hitting the ball hard and they can cover stuff and go 
defense to offense and a heartbeat. So they got to hit good shots with some pace on it, okay? As an amateur player, don't worry too much about swinging hard. Good angles is what it's all about. But from here, now you can go down the line easy. You can still go pitch without that, that ball coming a little deeper in your stance. Or even back door when they start to read that coming cross court and go right behind them cross court for your own shot. I'm going to do this as a one person drill. Show you what it looks like. It's, it's easier to do two person. We'll, we'll touch on that in a second. But as a one person drill, I'm going to start a little left of center here. I'm going to go back here to my forehand side. So I'm a little left of center, make myself up a pinch that's probably going to come off the side wall. I'm going to make sure I turn, rip that ball down the line. Now, that was a good example because it gave me a funky bounce off that side wall. I made it all the way out of fly to the side wall. I got to it just the time and hit a good angle. Let's try that again. A little lower. I'm not that quick anymore. I can't get that. Let's try that again. Okay, but at least I was able to go down line. Now on this one, I'm gonna make an adjustment and go into the corner for a pitch. And that third option being cross court. Now this happens when you had this happen a couple times in a match, and they're starting to read it and starting to try to get you down the line back towards them. Last second rotation from the up, opposite side. Going to come over here to my back now. Turn. Now, easy setup, but I had to turn even more than I anticipated. Again. Now, with the various shots, I'll go into the corner for a pinch this time. Last one, cross court. Ooh, a little mustard on that one. It's nice to do a one person drill, get these shots. These shots happen so often in a match, so work on it by yourself. What's up guys, Jose Diaz, rank number 14 on the IRT Tour, uh, here to talk to you about our new Ectalon RX Flips. Pretty cool. These are mainly for people that wear glasses, prescription glasses. It's a really cool new eye guard that's revolutionizing the racquetball industry for eye guards. Alright, so this cool, the flip flips up, so when your eye guards get foggy, you flip them up, flip them down when they're unfoggy. So you take these out. Take them to the eye doctor, they'll hook you right up. They insert pretty easily, put them back in. Or, even if you don't wear prescription eye guards, you can still use them. They're pretty cool. I recommend you use them. Okay, let's move on to our final segment here on our Christmas Day edition. Jesse Cern is coming at you guys right now. He's gonna give you a little information on how to train speed and strength for racquetball specifically. So stay tuned and watch closely. Hi, my name is Jesse Cerna, personal trainer here in Stockton, California. I've been a personal trainer for seven years full time. I attended the University of California, Berkeley and certified through the National Academy of Sports Medicine as a certified personal trainer. Uh, my own personal training philosophy is simply live healthier, live well. Um, that means doing everything, flexibility work, mobility work, eating right, strength training, conditioning, uh, pay attention to your body. Uh, by kind of coming towards your body a little better and understanding your body, it sucked. That one did it again. Sorry about that. Hi, my name is Jesse nope. Serna. Give it a second. Sorry. Sorry. Cut. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Jesse Serna, personal trainer here in Stockton, California. 
I attended the University of California, Berkeley, and am certified through the National Academy of Sports Medicine as a certified personal trainer. I've been training full-time for seven years here in Stockton, California. I believe in living well. And that means doing everything. Stretching, mobility work, uh, flexibility work, strength work, conditioning. Living well, eating right. Think more about what the things that you put into your body and do with your body uh, to let that enable you to do the things that you enjoy doing. Uh, that's my own personal fitness philosophy. I try to instill that in my clients and hope they see me living that life and through that maybe inspire them to, to do the same. Here in Stockton, California, I'm lucky to have another second job. Uh, that would be working with the 209 boys. Uh, on a weekly basis, I meet individually with Jose Rojas, Jose Diaz, uh, Marky Rojas, Bobby Horn, as well as Coach John Ellis and Dave Ellis. Uh, working on their off-court activities, that strength training, uh, conditioning, agility training, footwork training, and general lifestyle uh, cons consultations. Uh, so hopefully uh, they have adopted that same idea that living this way, working hard, training hard, eating right, sleeping more, uh, making better decisions about what they do with their bodies and to their body will enable them to make the most out of their racquetball, uh, their racquetball games. Hopefully today you see a couple videos uh, that'll enjoy, uh, it'll help you, maybe inspire you, and enable you to get a little bit more out of your racquetball game. Uh, we all love the game. We want to play more. We want to play better racquetball. Um, so maybe there's some other things that you can do off the court that can assist you in doing just that. Thanks a lot. Jesse Serna, Ectolon TV, talking about self myofascial release, foam rolling. You've probably seen these around. Your gym, I'm sure you got it, has half, about three feet long, it kind of looks like a pool noodle. They actually really, really important part of what you do as part of your recovery process as well as your warming up process. Um, pretty simple idea here. What you do is actually you place your body on top of this roller in different positions, and you're trying to do, you're trying to break up those knots in that body. See, best way to think about is this: your muscles kind of like that, okay? All bunched up and knotted. First thing you got to do is you got to get them to kind of relax a little bit. So you got to apply enough pressure to that right there to get it to. Relax, and once it's finally here, that's when you can stretch it. Does that make sense? This is part one then of your flexibility process. Gets you warmed up, gets you going. So, real simple way. Let's start with our calves, pretty common area of tightness. I'm gonna place this foam roller right below my ankle, or just above my ankle, excuse me. Um, I'm gonna take my right leg, I'm gonna place it on top. Now this is, I think, an important part of this, is sit tall, get your abs tight. Think about being strong and holding yourself intact while you do this. You want your muscles to return to the proper length, not just the longer length, but the proper length, okay? So, sitting the tall, I'm flexing my ankle just a little bit, okay? I'm now gonna massage my body, my calf right there on that foam roller, just letting my body sink into that, looking for anything that feels like a knot, uh, sometimes it's a long strand of tightness, um, and I'll let you know by right there, that little kind of painful feeling I just had, that's where I need to hang out. So I hang out there, maybe 10, 15 seconds until I feel it release a little bit, uh, it feels a little better, and then I'll move along. Now that can be done in all different parts of your body. Let's focus on a couple basic ones that are icy tightness generally in racquetball players, okay? So we're talking about, okay, quadriceps right there at the top of your thighs, that inside portion of your adductors, that little teardrop in your quadricep, okay? The outside part of your thigh, and up in your lats. So let's work those areas real quickly. Taking the foam roll, I'm gonna place it down in front of me. Coming to an all fours with what seems to me almost like a push-up position on your forearms, a planking position, if you will. And I'm gonna place that roller right above my knee on my left side here. So right there, I'm resting my left thigh right there on it. I take my right leg up to the side here, hands down, excuse me, forearms down on the ground, and then again, drawing my butt, my abdomen, squeezing my glutes, just rolling again, back and forth, where I feel tightness. Now, keep in mind, it's not a flat plane, so you gotta roll on the middle of it, get to the side of it a little bit in there too. Look for where you find your spots. For me, I got one right there. So I'll need that, hang out there for a little bit. Uh, releases, then I'll move on to the next. That's a great way to get things warmed up. Now if I'm afterwards and I work, work a recovery roll, if you will, I'll tend to take kind of more long. I think about massaging the muscles. So instead of just hanging out in that one specific spot, I'll just roll, kind of give myself a nice little massage, rolling back and forth over that. So two different techniques. Sit and rest on it, the acupressure 
uh, method, or kind of going back to the kneading or massaging method. One before, one for after. So that's for the quadricep. For the side of the thigh, and I'm gonna turn down to my right thigh, this IT, that iliotibial band, you probably heard it, uh, um, and that's maybe why your knee hurts. Um, but let's see if we can get some relief in there. It takes a lot of brunt from forehands, rotational, you know, hip movement. So forehands, backhands, big twists, or put pressure in that. Let's make sure we open that up. So, laying on your side, this one never feels that great, I gotta be honest with you. Rest it on my forearm here. Roller just above my hip where you can start your knee either place. I take my top foot to the side and that's my pusher. It also relieves some of that pressure. And then again, I'm just rolling, looking for those knots. I got one about right there personally. Oh, it's a pretty good one, I'm gonna hang out there. I think I can take a little more pressure, so what I'll do, because I feel like I need a little bit more is, I'll stack this foot right on top, adds just a little more weight and allows that body to add more pressure, getting that tissue to release and let me go on the next spot. Quick little tip, when you get up near that hip, right at the very top, Instead of saying on your side, I like to roll down just a little bit. You got this little hip flexor. It's about right in here, okay? You've probably seen it. You know what it feels like the day after playing a tournament all bunched up on you. So get up in that spot, roll over just a little bit, find it, need it. I know it hurts, it's not good, but it is when it's done and it's a lot better than your back hurt you know, that next day after playing too much. So roll that hip area out. Again, feel a little release and then go. Last one we're working on today, inside of the thigh, okay? That the teardrop uh, uh, in, in your quadricep. So from here, again, much like that other one we came down to in our forearms, I'm gonna place a roll on my side, perpendicular now to my leg, excuse me, to my femur right here, so you can see that resting right there on the inside, just above that knee. This is not pleasant, okay? A little uncomfortable here as I roll in there, and I got a good little knot there, but as I'm doing that, Hey, wait a minute, all of a sudden I'm feeling the relief in my knee. What's going on there? It feels great. Just keep rolling side to side, releases. Oh, so much better. My knee's starting to move around. I can feel it. Start to loosen up a little bit. So, a couple of quick areas there for your thigh. Let's throw one more out there for those tight shoulders. That day after you played, or even before you start playing, that tightness right here in your lats, just below your shoulders. Let's make sure we open that up. A lot of swinging, a lot of contraction right in there, both this way and that way in the sides of your body, the strong back muscles. So let's make sure we hit those as well. So, roll goes down on that mat, perpendicular to my spine. I lay on my side again. I extend that arm out nice and long, then I'm gonna lay down on it real long, allow my weight to sink on it. I take this top hand here and make myself a little fist. That goes right on my shoulder. Head rests off right there on my little pillow. Now I keep my head in line too. And now I'm just looking for little spots, oh, like that one. Oh yeah, I'm gonna let that hang right there. I'm gonna get a little bit of release from there. And that's great. So, a couple quick things we went over today. self myofascial release techniques using the foam roller. All kinds of products available where you can do this. Um, I have a foam roller Buddy makes for me. It's a little denser, it's got PVC pipe, a little foam on top. Uh, things like the stick also can be used in the same fashion, same idea, breaking up tissue. Real important tools. Today we mostly just work with the foam roller. Two ways of doing it. You do it at the start, acupressure, sit on that spot, let it go, let it go, let it go until it does go, okay? Second one, the uh, uh, kneading method or, or massaging, and that's the after, that's recovery. Roll those muscles, get that lactic acid out there and just kind of give yourself a nice gentle massage. Uh, roll it out, roll it every day, roll it before, roll it after, makes it better. Welcome back. Going to the new year, it's that time to really think about eating right, training right, and taking better care of your body. Everyone's making New Year's resolutions about things, dropping weight, feeling better, going to the gym more often. Well, as racquetball players, we already have that in the gym mentality. Now it's just a matter of going to the other side. So just a couple things to think in mind. If we're gonna add some off-court activity, that is strength training, um, as well as cardiovascular training or conditioning, as I like to call it, um, keep in mind that it's an exercise budget that you have. So if you're spending a certain amount of time out there, let's not go ahead and throw an extra five days of cardio or five days of strength training on top of your racquetball, whatever you're doing. Now this hurts to say, it may mean taking a little bit out of your racquetball time, but think of it this way, you're taking a little bit away from playing racquetball to be able to play better racquetball. So what's that mean? Uh, typically, won't we start by adding maybe two to three days of training to start with? That's not a lot to ask. Uh, sessions should last probably anywhere from uh, 45 minutes to an hour and a half. That's total from warm up 
to cool through cool down. Um, in that time, you should be able to take care of your flexibility training, your strength training, as well as your conditioning. Uh, throw that into your routine and you'll find better results throughout the year and have a little bit better time in the racquetball court. Now keep in mind, not everything you do as far as your fitness level uh, and your rack of improving your racquetball came off court happens in the gym. A lot of what happens is what you eat, that is what you put in your body. Uh, we forget that part of it. We get tired, we're done playing, we want to stop as fast as we can on the way home. Um, that's not going to cut it. Uh, you are expecting your body to perform like a high performance automobile running around on that car. You would never put the cheapest gas in that car, would you? Probably not, but that's what you're doing when you're stopping on that way home and picking just something up to eat. So let's think bigger about that. Think about making sure you're taking care of your racquetball game at the grocery store as well. And a real simple way that I think about it is I shop at the ends of the grocery store. So I walk in, I walk through, I see my produce, I walk through my produce, I get all my veggies, my different colors, I walk all the way through, I get my lean dairy at the end, maybe some eggs, my meat, I go to the far edge of there, maybe get a whole grain bread, and that's it, I'm right, to the I'm right to the checkout aisle. None of that stuff in boxes in the middle means a little more preparation, but that's healthy whole foods I'm putting in my body. Um, that's the good stuff, that's what's gonna let me train hard uh, on the racquetball court and off the racquetball court. Recovery, big, big topic. You're putting more work in now, you're eating a little better, but you find yourself getting beat up. That's that last piece. You gotta make sure that you gotta take care of, because that's actually where you get better, where you get stronger. The body rebuilds itself from all of that trauma and stimulus of training. So make sure you're taking care of yourself. Extra rest, maybe a hot contrast bath. That's something I really enjoy. Uh, making sure you're doing extra stretching in the evening, foam rolling techniques. All of these things will enable you to bounce back a little bit better. I look forward to seeing all you guys in the coming year. Make sure you watch these videos. They'll be coming at you. Uh, keep my, my voice in your head through the 2014. Hopefully it'll make you a little better. Hi, my name is Amy Ruiz, eight-time national doubles champion, and I just want to mention the uh, 03 glove to you. This is the current glove that I'm using right now, playing, and uh, you know it's a great glove. It, it fits great, and it, it feels great um, when you're holding onto the racket, and it also has a textured palm. So I would highly recommend the 03 glove. Hi, John Ellis again with Ectalon Racquetball. I've got our Power Pack here, and this is a really important product in our line of, of uh, products here for Ectalon Racquetball. The reason why is because it's perfect for beginners, and we all need to promote this game. And this perfect way to do this is get somebody a Power Pack. Now, what comes with the Power Pack is an energy racket, uh, perfect for beginners, again, low-level low players, three of our premium select racquetballs, and a pair of eye guards, and maybe the most important feature of this Power Pack is also our How to Play with Fire booklet here, and this goes through everything on the game, instructionals, a little bit of history of the, of the sport, of Ectalon racquetball, uh, some of the phrases that are used in racquetball, and definitely the rules. So it's a very important part of this Power Pack, but again, perfect for the beginning racquetball players, perfect for clubs to have in their pro shops or their little display spots with, at the front of their clubs. Uh, hopefully we can have these out in a bunch of new kids' hands playing racquetball this year. Thanks, Jesse Cerna. That's why you were on the nice list. Now, for all you out there, make sure to follow some of Jesse Cerna's directions here. Work on your speed and strength for racquetball. It's been a great year so far. We look forward to bringing more videos in 2014 to Ectalon channel on Inside the 209. Hope you've had a Merry Christmas and have a Happy New Year. Yeah.